All right. So today's topic is the types of galaxies. So this is sections 26.1 and 26.2. Um, today we'll talk about Hubble's classifications system. Um, so how we classify galaxies and also the history of that. And then we'll spend most of our time today on the Galaxy Zoo Lab, which you should have completed the pre-lab activity for. So let's dive right in. All right, so um, when we're thinking about types of galaxies, the first basic question that comes to mind is, what are galaxies anyway, right? So even after the telescope was invented, astronomers didn't even know whether other galaxies existed. In fact, a lot of astronomers thought that the Milky Way was the entire universe and that there was nothing outside of it. And so there were um, you know, observations of objects on the sky that clearly were not stars. And these um, started to be cataloged by um, someone called Charles Messier uh, from France. And it was basically a catalog of things that looked smudgy on the sky. They looked like just little fuzzy dots on the sky. The reason Messier was cataloging these was because he was a comet hunter trying to get famous for finding new comets. And these were things that were clearly not comets, but they um, looked like comets at first glance. So he wanted to make a catalog of these in case other people were interested in comets that they would know, nope, this is not one. So, you know, set your sights elsewhere. So anyway, once the, the Messier catalog is developed, um, astronomers started to notice that some of these looked like groups of stars, clusters of stars. So you can see lots of these two, three, four, five, those all look like star clusters. Um, lots of the other Messier objects are also star clusters. Um, but these star clusters are, they're not full galaxies. They're smaller than galaxies. In fact, they exist within galaxies, within our own Milky Way even. So um, other nebulae are actually just big collections of dust and gas. And so those are not galaxies either. But some of these do look like galaxies as we, as we think of our Milky Way looking. Large collections of stars, gas and dust, all held together by gravity. But astronomers were not sure that these nebulae were actually galaxies. And it wasn't until Edwin Hubble in 1925 that we were able to definitively say that yes, those could be other galaxies just like our own Milky Way. So the um, key to unlocking this idea that uh, there are other galaxies out there was this object, M31, also known now as the Andromeda Galaxy. Um, it's in the constellation of Andromeda, so in the direction of that constellation on the sky. And Hubble was studying this with the largest telescope at the time that was called the two and a half meter telescope on Mount Wilson. So here is Hubble with the two and a half meter telescope. And um, the observations that Hubble made in Andromeda was that it, there were individual stars that he could pick out within the galaxy. And one of these stars was called a Cepheid variable star. We'll talk about that next week. And this is a particular type of star that allows us to calculate its distance. It's like a standard distance um, measurement that we can use um, to figure out how distant something is. So by measuring the distance to that Cepheid variable, which was contained within Andromeda, Hubble was able to show that it was uh, in his calculation, 900,000 light years away. And this was outside of our Milky Way. We knew the extent of our Milky Way. Uh, we'll talk about how we know that in week three. So once Hubble knew that Andromeda was very distant, then uh, his hypothesis from that was that it must therefore be outside of the Milky Way. And also since he could resolve individual stars within it, he thought, okay, this is another galaxy. So after this, um, Hubble went on to catalog many different types of galaxies and calculate their distances and also the speeds that they traveled at. We'll learn how to do all of those things um, given various data in this class. So you will in a way follow some of the, the pathway of Edwin Hubble as we go through the first few weeks. All right, so like I said before, the, the kind of basic definition of a galaxy is a collection of stars, stellar remnants, gas, dust, and also dark matter that are all bound together by their mutual gravity. All right, so um, when we look at galaxies, we see many different shapes. So this is just a um, sampling of different types of galaxies. And if you were an early astronomer like Edwin Hubble, um, you would you know, 
you, this is the first time that you've been studying galaxies, um, you might decide you wanna sort them by their type, right? Some of these look more similar to each other than others. So maybe you take all the galaxies you see and you kind of sort them into different buckets. You come up with an organizing scheme, just in the same way that we organize birds based on their beak shape or based on their um, color of feathers or their habitat, right? We can do the same thing with galaxies by sorting them based on their, um, their shape, their size, their colors. So the key questions that Hubble used uh, in this new field of extragalactic astronomy were how are these galaxy similar? How are they different? And what might cause some of the differences between these? And with these questions, Hubble developed a classification system that we still use today. Uh, some people call it Hubble's tuning fork because of the shape. Um, so this consists of elliptical galaxies here on the tuning fork handle. And then the two uh, forks are the spirals and the barred spirals. So I'm gonna go into each of these categories in a little bit more detail. 